Hi, today we're going to learn about soaking willow. Uh, eventually in this video we'll learn about mellowing also. So this is the process to take willow that's been dried for about a year uh, into usable weaving form. So this willow all measures about four to four and a half feet. Uh, the general rule for soaking willow, which is just a guide, a very rough guide, is one foot per day. Uh, the temperature of the water and the species of willow uh, makes a big difference, so you do need to check it. So um, I've got two different species. This is a Salix purpurea dickey meadows. It's going to go in a six foot soaking tank. And this is Salix purpurea variety Nana, uh, and it's going to go in as well. So it's important to completely immerse it. There are many ways to do so. I've found that using these big blocks of wood works well. I have one on one end, one on another. Again, there's no one right way to soak your willow or to weight it down. Um, so uh, I've used pots with water in them to weight. Um, I have some metal that I've also put in there that makes the water a little rusty. Um, and there are many things you can put in to weight down the willow. There are also a variety of tanks you could use. Um, you can dig a hole in the ground and line the hole with uh, a tarp, uh, something that water won't permeate. Uh, you can make a frame of wood and lay a tarp over that and soak your willow in that. You can put it in a stream and weight it down with rocks. So um, or the bathtub is another option if the willow is not too um, long. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. I don't have any willow parts poking up, except right here. And I'll play with that. Um, this time of year, which is summer, it's June 14th, you may actually want to put some screen over this so that the mosquito don't lay eggs in here and you have a hatch. Um, Sometimes I inform uh, the water temperature by taking the temperature just with a regular food thermometer. So air temperature is about 67 and water temperature is about 59. And you don't have to do this, but when you're starting out, it may help you to get an idea how much time your willow takes by making a chart. So this is my willow soaking and mellowing record. Day one, today's date. I'm gonna put that temperature down. And just a brief note that I'm beginning my soaking. We'll check back on about day four. See you then. So this is day four of soaking. And we're gonna check both willows to see if they're ready. Uh, the first one, which is the Dickey Meadows variety, um, is looking close. Um, it has still a little bit of wrinkling on the outsides, so it's not completely smooth. Um, I'm going to check by taking a an average size, so in the bundle they'll be large, medium, and small. Take one in the middle range and then bend it about 90 degrees and see if the bark is breaking. So, so far it's not breaking. I'm gonna go all the way and when I go completely 180 degrees, you'll see it cracks. That, that last bit was just to find out what else is happening. I'd say this is really close. I'm gonna take that same piece 
and I'm going to look at it a little bit further. I'm going to wrap it around this wooden piece. I am getting some bark cracking. I don't know if you can see that, but the bark is cracking. I think I'm going to give this another day or so. Okay, so we have one other species in here. We have a couple different size ranges. I've pulled out one size, one of the smaller ones, and I'm going to do the same thing. 90 degrees, no break in the bark. I'm going to go the rest of the way and get quite a bit of a crack. Um, this is also, I would say, close. So I'm going to take a little bit larger piece from one of the other bundles and see how that does. That definitely cracked at 90 degrees, so that is not ready. Um, I am going to give this all another day. I recorded the temperature already. The temperature has increased. Today when I took it, it was 68 degrees. If you'll recall, it was 59 degrees when we started. Day five. Um, so yesterday uh, wasn't quite good enough uh, for the four and a half to four foot willow. Uh, so we gave it another day and now we're gonna check, do the same thing. So I'm gonna bend the Dickey Meadows first and bend it to 90 degrees, see if the bark breaks. Ah, the bark is not actually breaking at this. I'm going to go a little bit further. It's still a little bit crunchy. Um, I am going to wrap it around a winder and see how it acts. See if I get any bark cracking or kinking. I'm getting both. So um, I think I'm going to give this another day at least. Next we'll check the Nana and bend it 90 degrees. Uh, no break. Wrap it around the winder. I am not seeing any breakage and it's looking pretty relaxed. So I think this is going to be good. So um, for this today, we're going to start the mellowing process. But before we do that, we are going to dry it. So usually I spread it out a little bit depending on the air temperature and moisture. It'll dry out uh, anywhere from 15 minutes to maybe an hour or so. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything too much bigger than that. I might test one more piece. I'm going to test a slightly larger piece. And now that one cracked. That was a previous crack there. Hmm. This one is not acting ready. So if I have any bundles that are larger material than this, I may give this another day too. This is all a very similar size. So it's kind of a fine distinction. See, we're getting some darkening in the willow. That means it, to me that it's saturated. We don't want to get it too wet. We don't want to over soak it or the bark will slip and it uh, will be too weak. Uh, so I'm going to hope, I'm going to take this out. So it's a, I have a little question in my mind of whether that's the right thing to do or not. But um, I'm hoping that the rest of the way um, to the appropriate weaving dimensions will be done when we are 
uh, done with the mellowing process. So one other thing to think about here, this Nana is all going to be used as weavers. It won't be a border. Um, to have a border, you want it really super flexible. Uh, but for weavers, it needs to be slightly less so. So I think this is going to be fine. Uh, and that's it for today. See you tomorrow. This is day seven of soaking and mellowing willow. Um, we're checking on the Dickey Meadows, which is the only remaining willow in the tank. And um, I'm noticing that there is still uh, a little bit of wrinkling to the bark. It's, it's um, only slightly obvious. Um, and it doesn't, doesn't look like it's probably done yet. But I'm going to test it um, and I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees. It's not breaking there or here or here. It is breaking a little bit there. Um, I'm going to get some more information by taking it around a winder to see if I get some more breakage. It's better than it was yesterday, but I am still getting some breakage. I think it's going to take um, at least another day. So uh, we'll look at the Nana, which has been mellowing for two days. So it should be ready. And I'm going to look for a medium sized piece from my bundle. This is medium to large. And I'm going to carry that around the winder as well and see how it does. And it's doing pretty nicely. I am going to call that ready. So in a way, if you didn't have a freezer like I have, it would be tough. You would have your spokes, which is the Dickey Meadow, that are not ready yet not even mellowed, not even soaked yet, and everything else, the weavers that are ready. Um, so, um, the best thing is to estimate better than I did up front. So that would have meant putting in the Dickey Meadows a few days ahead of time. In the past, I've had a lot of trouble with the Nana, even though it's small. So, uh, but I guessed wrong and that happens. And um, so I'm putting the mellowed willow in the freezer. It will keep um, probably for a month uh, in pretty good shape. Uh, after that, it starts drying out and it's uh, only, only passably good. Um, so I wanna show you a little bit about how I would fold and wrap that willow. So if we were going to be wrapping the Dickey Meadows today, um, I have a, a painter's cloth here, but any kind of a heavy cotton or other heavy fabric, probably not the polyester so much. You want it to retain a little moisture um, and I would sprinkle it um, and get the whole cloth damp, but not sopping wet by any means. So remember that when you start the mellowing process, you completely dry the willow. So that just means the outside surface is dry. So, uh, and then you uh, either lay a damp towel over it if the conditions are kind of moist and you want a little airflow, uh, or if it's really hot, you might want to actually wrap it all the way around. That's something you'll have to play with. So you want you want that moisture to permeate the willow, so you don't want it to dry out too much. Um, and at the same time, you don't want it to mold. So sometimes that's a fine balancing act. I had originally intended to show you day eight when I removed the Dickey Meadows from the tank, but that's no longer possible. I'd like to uh, 
give you the uh, things to look for again, just as a reminder, when you're removing your willow from the tank and you're making that decision whether it's soaked enough, it's important not to have any obvious wrinkling of the skin. It's also important that when you bend it at 90 degrees toward the base, you're not getting breakage of the willow bark. Uh, and also that you're not getting breakage when you bring that piece of willow around a winder at the upper levels of the willow. So um, I have an example of both the Nana and the Dickey Meadows after they've been mellowed. So they mellowed in a damp cloth for two days each. Uh, and then I popped them both into the freezer and then for this, I removed them and thawed them out. So, um, things to remember in mellowing are dry the willow after it comes out of the soaking tank, 15 minutes to an hour or so, spreading it apart a little bit, so all the way around the willow rods, it's dry. Then you wanna dampen the cloth either lay the cloth on top of or around the willow, depending on your conditions, and mellow it for a minimum of one day and um, better for two days. Uh, then you should get a condition similar to what I'm gonna show you for both species. So um, we've got the Nana, first of all, and I'm bending it at 90 degrees, no break. Wrapping it around a winder. And it's uh, not quite buttery. It still has some firmness, which uh, usually you want and I like. Completely buttery would probably be over-soaked. Uh, I'm gonna also carry it around a smaller size dowel and see how that does. And that would mimic more closely a border or um, on a rib basket, the rim of the basket. Uh, so the Nana is very in very good condition. I'm gonna do the same thing for the Dickey Meadows. Gonna bend it at 90 degrees uh, and it's looking good. Uh, I'm gonna carry it around a winder and again, it looks good. There is a little bit uh, of wrinkling in the bark. It's not a lot. I'm going to wrap this around the smaller size dowel. And there's no kinking, and I think that would work well around either um, a ribbed basket or a basket with a traditional stake and strand border. Uh, Thank you. Uh, the one thing to remember is you'll always be learning. Talk to other people, see what they do, and eventually you'll come to your own way.